Hey everybody, this is Miss Kaylee. I need to talk to your parents for a minute, so if they're not there with you, can you pause the video and go get them for me real quick? Thank you. Hey parents, this week we're going to be looking at the scripturally accurate account of the new king in Egypt and the Hebrews. It does have some difficult subject matter that may not be suitable for all children. If you would, look at the screen to see some of the things that will be discussed. Also, we have something in our nature lesson that may not be suitable for all children. If you would, look at it, decide if it's right for you and your family. If it's not, you can skip ahead. We have the timestamp in the description, so you can skip if you need to and not miss out on the rest of the lesson. All right, let's get going. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom friends, I'm Miss Jordan and I'll be your host today. And today I brought along two of my sons. This is Joey and Tyler. Can y'all tell everybody hi? Hi. Today's a really special day on Train to Ventura. We get to start a whole new book in our Bible. Last week we finished up Genesis and today we get to start the first chapter of Exodus. Are y'all excited about that? Yes. yes. What was y'all's favorite story in, Ex in Exodus, in Genesis? Uh, my favorite was the baker and the cupbearer. Yeah, why was that your favorite? And because Joseph interpreted their dreams, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that, that he could interpret the dreams? Yeah. Yeah, why do you like that so much? Because I went to interpret the dreams, and he was really lucky. <laughs> because you want to interpret your own dreams, huh? Yeah. That would be neat. Tyler, what was your favorite part of Genesis? Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark, why is that your favorite? Because Yahweh and told Noah to build this huge boat and that go hold every animal, bird, reptile and species in it. Yeah, that's kind of cool to have all that come together in one big boat, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that is very cool. What was y'all's favorite part of Genesis? What did y'all like or learn in our in all of our lessons through Genesis. Let us know down in the comments. All right, so let's get started with Exodus now. Let's go and listen to our song and our scripture story and our nature story, and I'll meet y'all right back here to talk about that. Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malhuto, Leolam Vayed. Amen, Amen. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day that you've made. We thank you for bringing us to another Shabbat. Thank you for trained up in Torah. We pray you bless everyone in a special way with your presence as we learn to walk in your ways. We love you and thank you and pray this in Yeshua's wonderful name. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. I have a song I'd like to share with you, and the name of this song is called Great Nation. This is a story of a great nation, the sons and daughters of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, whose story I would like to tell, how they grew up and multiplied, the Hebrews living right beside, the Egyptians in the sand, growing great and filling up the land. How amazing to see them. Joseph, who was one of their own, so he started to afflict them more. Working hard, they were very sore, and then he tried to kill their sons, to take the Hebrews down one by one. And this the midwives wouldn't do, and so Yah's children grew and grew. How amazing to see them now. This is 
story of a great nation, the sons and daughters of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, whose story we would like to tell. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, boys and girls. My name is Miss Megan, and I'm really happy to see you here today. Today, we're going to be starting our journey in Exodus. So let's turn in our Bibles to Exodus chapter 1. And these are the names of the children of Israel who came to Mitzrayim with Yahoo, each one with his household. Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Yehuda, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all those who were descendants of Yaakov were seventy beings, as Yosef was already in Mitzarim. And Yosef died, and all his brothers, and all of that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased very much, multiplied, and became very strong, and the land was filled with them. Then a new sovereign arose over Mitzrayim, who did not know Yosef, and he said to his people, See, the people of the children of Israel are more and stronger than we. Come, let us act wisely towards them, lest they increase, and it shall be when fighting befalls us, that they join our enemies and fight against us, and shall go up out of the land. So they set slave masters over them to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Pithom and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they increased and grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. And the Mitzrites made the children of Israel serve with harshness, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all kinds of work in the field. All their work which they made them do was with harshness. Then the sovereign of Mitzrayim spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Shipra and the name of the other Pua, and said, when you deliver the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall put him to death. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared Elohim and did not do as the sovereign of Mitzrayim commanded them and kept the male children alive. So the sovereign of Mitzrayim called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and kept the male children alive? And the midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Mitzrayim women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. So Elohim was good to the midwives, and the people increased and became very numerous. And it came to be, because the midwives feared Elohim, that he provided households for them. And Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Throw every son who is born into the river, and keep alive every daughter. I have a question for you. Do you know where you were born? I know I was born in a hospital, but my daughter was born in a birth center, and my son, he was born at home. Nowadays, most people go to the hospital to have their babies delivered. But what about in biblical times, when there were no doctors or hospital? In those days, midwives helped deliver babies. A midwife is someone who helps women during labor, delivery, and after the baby is born. After birth, they make sure that baby is growing well and that the mom is healthy too. When you are helping the Hebrew woman during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. But what does it mean when Pharaoh is talking about the delivery stool? Well, a delivery stool is just that, a stool that's used during childbirth. The stool can have a special cutout so that the baby can come out. The mother may choose to put a leg on a short stool or in a squatting position. Other times, the mother may choose to sit on the stool and deliver the baby sitting down. It all depends on what is most comfortable for the mother. By delivering a baby by standing or sitting up, gravity helps to bring the baby down and out. Now you don't need a midwife there to help deliver a baby. It's even mentioned in scripture. 
Exodus 1, 18, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. Many babies have been born without the help of a midwife. Sometimes it's the father that helps deliver the baby. Yahweh made our bodies capable of amazing things, so our bodies know just what to do. I hope you enjoyed today's nature lesson, and I pray you have a blessed week. Shabbat Shalom. All right, so we've made it through our very first chapter of Exodus. Joey, what did you think about that chapter? It's pretty sad. What was sad about it to you? All the male babies being thrown into the river. Yeah, that's a, a pretty sad point, huh? Mm-hmm. Part of it. Tyler, what did you think about the story? I think it was constant on and off, happy and sad. Okay, what was a happy point? In the story for you. Never all the midwives um, feared Yahweh and kept the male babies. Yeah, that's a very encouraging part of the story. But what was sad to you? Never they were forced to throw their babies into the river. Right, yeah. That, that is a very, probably the most dramatic and, and sad part of this chapter for sure. But why weren't the daughters thrown into the river? Because it would still be increasing. Right, because women have the babies. So why not just kill them both? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, in the chapter it speaks about Pharaoh, the Pharaoh being worried that the Israelites were going to multiply so much that they would overtake the Egyptians. And the males are who would become the army. So um, I, I'm assuming that maybe that had something to do with him wanting to kill and get rid of the males so that they couldn't rise up and grow an army. Okay. Yeah. So I like what Tyler brought up about how the midwives feared Yahweh, and that caught my attention too. And I just wanted to um, emphasize the point that the, the midwives, they feared Yahweh over man, and they were much more concerned over... Um, their their respect and um, obedience to Yahweh than to Pharaoh and what the consequences of uh, disobeying Yahweh would be over the consequences of disobeying Pharaoh. And as we see, God protects them and then he goes on and he provides for them greatly. And so we, we know we can always put our trust in Yahweh. We can put our trust in following him and that he will... Um, be with us and reward us for that obedience and for that that faithfulness. All right, we're going to move on to our Hebrew lesson, our history lesson, and our moral lesson, and I'll meet you right back here after those. Shabbat Shalom. For this week's Hebrew, we're going to have another Hebrew review where we look at an old chapter from Genesis and just go over the words again. I hope you enjoy. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Mishpacha. This is your Chavara Yohana, or Miss Joanna, here with Bryn to present this week's Hebrew language lesson. Today we will learn how to say the names of the body parts in Hebrew. This after hearing about the creation of Ben Adam, or human beings, or literally children of Adam, 
from Genesis chapter 2. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. The Hebrew name of this book of Torah is Bereshit, which means beginning. The very first words in the book of Bereshit are, In the beginning Yahweh created. Today we learned about Yahweh's creation of the first Ish, man, and the first Isha, woman, who were said to be created Betzalem Elohim, that is, in the image of Elohim. Scripture tells us that Yahweh created the Ish, man, from the dirt of the ground, and he named the Ish, man, Adam, or Adam. The word Adam comes from the same Hebrew root word that both red and dirt come from. Some people explain that the dirt Yahweh created Adam from must have been red clay, and that's why Yahweh gave him the name Adam, or Adam. From today's Bible story, we learn that Adam, or Adam, could not find the right partner for himself from among the animals in the garden. So Yahweh caused Adam, or Adam, to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, Yahweh took one of Adam's ribs and created the first Isha, woman, so Adam would not be alone. Adam called the woman Chava, or Eve, which means life or life giver because she was called the mother of all the living. Yahweh called the Isha, woman, an Azir Konegdo, which is a difficult phrase to translate into English, but could be said to mean something like, a very close and very strong friend who works well with the Ish, man, when he is working righteousness. Yahweh then set Adam, Adam, and Chava, Eve, to work together in the garden. Part of Adam's job had been to name all of the animals. Today, our task is to name the body parts of Ben Adam, or human beings, in Hebrew. So let's start at the head, and we'll go to the toes. I'll say each word, and then I'll repeat it, and then you try and say it. Okay? Let's begin. The Hebrew word for body is goof. Goof. The Hebrew word for skin is or. Or. The Hebrew word for head is rosh. Rosh. The Hebrew word for face is panim. Panim. On top of the head, most people have hair. The Hebrew word for hair is seor, seor. In Hebrew, the word for eye is ayin, ayin. The word for ear in Hebrew is ozen, ozen. Okay, I don't know about you, but I could take a bit of a break. So wherever you are, head to toe and hands and feet. Let's just shake it all out. Shake your whole body. Shake, shake, shake. Shake everything out. Get out some energy. Just shake, shake, shake. <sighs> all right. Doesn't that feel better? Now let's get back to work. The Hebrew word for nose is off. Off. Hebrew word for mouth is pay. Pay. In Hebrew, the word for lips is svatayim. Svatayim. The Hebrew word for tooth is shen. Shen. In Hebrew, the word tongue is lashon. Lashon. The Hebrew word for chin is santer, santer. And on the chin, we grow a zakan, or beard, zakan. In Hebrew, the word for arm is zroa, zroa. The Hebrew word for hand is yad, yad. 
the Hebrew word for hands is yadaim. Yadaim. In Hebrew, the word finger is etzba. Etzba. The Hebrew word for fingers is etzbaot. Etzbaot. The Hebrew word for shin is shok. Shok. The Hebrew word for foot is regel. Regel. The word for feet in Hebrew is reglaim. Reglaim. In Hebrew, the word back is pronounced gav. Gav. The Hebrew word for belly or tummy or stomach is beten. Beten. Ben Adam, or human beings, have lots of body parts, and we only talked about a few. But those myriad body parts all come together to make up individual people. People who are made Betzalem Elohim, in the image of Elohim. In Tehillim, that's Songs of Praise, which we call the Book of Psalms in English, King David, or King David, says, I give thanks to you, for I am fearfully, that means awesomely, and wonderfully made. Wondrous are your works. My soul knows it well. With David's words in mind, I want you to remember, as you practice saying the names of the body parts in Hebrew throughout the week, that you are awesomely and wonderfully made. Betzalem Elohim in the image of Elohim. Mazel Tov! Which means congratulations. You have just learned many more new Hebrew words. The more you say them, the quicker you will remember them, and the better you'll become at using them. So practice saying these Hebrew words throughout the week. Until next time, my Havarim. Shalom B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Peace to you in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Shalom, y'all. Hey, it's Miss Jessica here with our history lesson today and Miss Eowyn to help. I hope you all are having a blessed Shabbat. Wow, we can you believe that we are already in the book of Exodus or Shemot? Learning our way through Genesis or Bereshith with you has been so much fun. I am so excited to be starting a whole new book with you. What about you, Eowyn? So am I. Well, something stuck out in today's story for me. Some very brave women were mentioned in today's scripture story. Did you happen to catch who they were? Well, their names, and please forgive me if I mispronounce these, were Shifra and Pua, and they were midwives. If you haven't heard of a midwife before, they are a person, typically a woman, trained to assist women in childbirth. The easy way to understand that is that they help moms to deliver their babies into the world. How cool is that? We even read about some midwives back in Bereshith when Rachel was giving birth to Benjamin. And also, we saw one mention when Tamar was giving birth in Genesis 38. Well, midwifery has been around for a very long time, hasn't it? Pretty awesome. The job of a midwife has them relying on their instincts and emotions, as well as their knowledge and skills to help the mother and child have a safe delivery. This knowledge in the days of scripture had to be passed down to one another as they trained their successors. Their successor was someone who was learning the skill from them and they would eventually take over their job. Now their successor would learn from and under the guidance of the practicing midwife. They would go with them and they would help and they were hands on and there the whole time learning and gathering in that knowledge. Nowadays, to become a midwife, you must complete and graduate certain programs. It's a lot of hard work, but the midwives that I know of think that it's a super duper rewarding and awesome job, which I have to agree. I think that it is. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you guys have a blessed Shabbat. 
Shalom. Hey guys, this is Miss Megan again, and I'm back to talk about something I noticed in today's lesson. Toward the end of the story, Pharaoh gives a command to the Hebrew midwives to kill any baby boys that they deliver. And it says in verse 17, But the midwives feared Elohim and did not do as the sovereign of Mitzrayim commanded them and kept the male children alive. That act from the midwives was incredibly courageous. Disobeying the king's new rule could very well have ended their lives, but they decided they feared Elohim more than anything Pharaoh could have done to them and their physical bodies. They knew their souls were at stake. So, what exactly does it mean to fear Elohim, and how do you do it? Well, let's take a look at scripture to get a better idea. In Proverbs 8.13, it says, The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. Proverbs 97 verse 10 says, You who love Yahweh hate evil. He guards the lives of his kind ones. He delivers them out of the hand of the wrong. And in Ecclesiastes 12.13, it says, Fear Elohim and guard his commands, for this applies to all mankind. Hmm, I'm seeing a pattern here. Are you? To fear Elohim means to not do what he says is evil and sinful, which is another way of saying to follow his commandments. So by doing what he says is good and righteous and following his commandments, we are fearing Elohim. See, I knew we could figure this out together. So following his commands, got it. Simple enough, right? Keep the Sabbath, don't lie, obey your parents, and I'm not going to murder anyone, so we're doing pretty good. This seems far easier than standing up to Pharaoh and breaking his rules, or when Abram was told to put his son Isaac on the sacrifice altar, or even when Esther stood up and spoke out against the man who wanted to wipe her people to extinction. We aren't living in times quite like those, so how hard could this be? Well, what if you're hanging out with your friends and they start gossiping? Or even worse, they start directly saying hurtful things to someone else. Are you going to stand up to your friends and tell them what they are doing or saying is wrong? Standing up to your friends and doing the right thing may not cost you your life, but it could cost you a friendship. So, what do you do? Back in our story, after the midwife stood up to Pharaoh, scripture goes on to tell us in verse 20 that Elohim was good to the midwives and the people increased and became very numerous. Do you see that? Because they feared Elohim instead of Pharaoh, they followed his commandments and did what was right, and they were blessed for it. Obedience to Yahweh and his commands brings forth blessings. It was true then, and it is true now. It may not always be the easiest thing in the moment to stand up for righteousness. But like David says in Psalm 118 verse 6, Yahweh is on my side. I do not fear what man does to me. Elohim is far greater than any man, no matter how big or scary that person or situation may seem at the time. Standing up for what is right and walking out our faith can be a daily struggle. And some days will certainly be harder than others as we are presented with earthly challenges. But we can rest assured that not only does Yahweh promise to guard us and deliver us when we fear Him and follow His commands, but He will bless us for doing so. What an amazing promise this is to us. Hallelujah. I pray you guys have a peaceful Sabbath and that Yahweh gives you courage and strength to tackle the challenges of the week ahead as you obey His commands and walk in all His ways. Until next time, Shalom! All right, so how are you enjoying this very first chapter of Exodus? Are you liking it? I hope you are, and let me tell you, we're just getting started in this book, and this book is exciting, and it has a lot of famous stories in it, and a lot of exciting stories in it, stories that lay big, great groundwork and framework for the rest of the Bible and for our lives. So I hope you'll stick around and keep learning with us and keep on journeying through the book of Exodus with us. All right, guys, my time with y'all is over, but I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your time with Trend Up and Torah. We still have our song, our memory verse, our craft, our snack, and a prayer at the end. So stick around, have some fun, and we will see you next time. Shabbat Shalom, friends. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I pray you're all having a wonderful Sabbath. This week, our memory verse is Romans 8, 18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the esteem he will reveal to us later. As the children of Israel have increased over many years, so has their strength. This displeases the new leader of Mitzrayim, so he sets out to make them slaves and to make their lives miserable. Pharaoh commanded that all Hebrew sons born be killed by the people of Mizraim. This must have been a very trying time for the children of Israel. The Hebrews had to be brave in such hard times and trust in Yahweh. Romans 8:18. 8, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the esteem he will reveal to us later. Shabbat Shalom, and have a wonderful week, everyone. Hey kids, this is Miss Delena, and for our craft today, we will be making memory verse bricks. You'll need a brick, craft paint, paintbrushes, a permanent marker, water, a paper towel, a paper plate, and a piece of paper. I've already painted one side of my brick as an example. Here I use flowers, but you can paint yours however you like. When I read our memory verse today, I noticed the promise of glory, and when I think of glory, I think of rays of sunshine, so that's what I'm going to paint on my brick. You may be wondering why we're painting bricks today. What does that have to do with our story? Well, 
When the Israelites were in Egypt, the bricks became a symbol of bondage and suffering. But today, we're going to paint them, and they're going to become a bright and beautiful symbol of the promise of glory. When you're done painting your brick, you can use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. But once they are dry, you can take your permanent marker and write down the memory verse in the center of the brick like I did. Now you can put these bricks in your garden and you can even do it with other memory verse and watch your garden of scripture grow. Shabbat Shalom! This is Miss Delana, and today we're going to make mud brick cookies like the bricks that the Israelites made for the Egyptians. You're going to need peanut butter, chocolate chips, and some pretzels. You're going to need a glass bowl and a spatula. You will need a one cup measuring cup, a one third of a cup measuring cup, a Ziploc baggie, and an ice cream cake tray. We're going to start with our chocolate chips. We need one cup of chocolate chips. And now we need our peanut butter. We need one third of a cup. We're going to put that in with our chocolate chips. And then we're gonna melt that all together. Okay, now I have that mixed together and I just melted it in my microwave for about 10 to 20 seconds at a time until it's all melted together. So now we have our peanut butter clay and our chocolate chip mud. And now it's time to get our straw ready. So we're gonna take our baggie. And we're gonna put some pretzels in it. about halfway. And then we're going to chop them up a little bit here. You can use a measuring cup or a spoon if you like. Okay, so now all of them are at least broken in half. And now we're going to measure about one cup out of them. each of the squares with our cookie mix. And this will form our bricks. Okay, so now you can put that in your freezer or just let it sit on your counter until the chocolate is set. All right, now my mud bricks are frozen and set. And so now I'm gonna pop them out of my tray. So now you can kind of break off little pieces that are sticking up. stick them kind of like bricks. And 
and then you can snack on them. Those are really good. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed our snack today and y'all have a blessed Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This is Miss A. One of you prayer. Yahweh, please be with Shabbat School and please be with the people all working on Shabbat School so they can learn and understand and let their children or whoever is around them in their family to learn about the Bible and follow the scripture. And Yahweh, just thank you for history and prayers and song and Shabbat school, so we will have more fun in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. <laughs>